Verses 4 and 5 show us the results. Look in verse 4. <clears throat> Some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. Notice this. When the Bible was faithfully preached, some were persuaded, but some were not. Some were persuaded, others were not. Some heard the word of God reasonably explained to them, and they believed what they heard. Others heard the very same message, but they responded with anger and unbelief. So I have to draw the conclusion that belief is supernatural, isn't it? If it, it's more than just good gospel preaching, salvation is more than just faithful Bible preaching. Because if salvation was found in just preaching the word, then these people would have all been saved. But how do you explain the fact that they all heard the same thing and some were persuaded and some weren't? Something supernatural has got to be at work. Some of these people are believing it with their hearts. The Bible tells us that we need God's spirit to give life to our dead hearts. More than just a good sermon, we need the Holy Spirit to work in our midst. Otherwise, we will never believe. So I want to encourage you from this passage because we see that God uses solid Bible preaching, doesn't he? He uses solid Bible preaching to convert and persuade unbelievers. That's what happens here. Paul's reasoning from the scriptures. He's explaining and he's demonstrating. And there's people sitting there hearing that and they're saying, my Lord and my God, I, I want to give my life to this Savior. But I also want to draw comfort from this passage. Because even Paul labored among people who hardened their hearts and didn't believe the gospel message. So if we're discouraged tonight because we've been faithfully preaching and speaking the scriptures and it's not working, understand that even here in Acts there were some who did not believe, some who were not persuaded. We present the word of God to the ears of our hearers, but we pray. We were just in prayer a couple of moments ago. We pray that God's spirit will put it in the heart. That's something I can't do. I can make sure you hear it with your ears. But I'm praying and I'm pleading that the Spirit puts it in your heart. James says the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. God uses the proclamation of his word. This is an encouragement for us to speak the gospel. So that means that when our preaching is received, we are thankful to God. God, thank you so much that somebody heard the word and believed. It also means when our preaching is rejected, we trust God and we pray. We don't harden our hearts and say, well, that person, we pray. God, please send your spirit. Open the eyes of their heart. Thus far, we've seen the work of the preacher. Dig out the meaning of the words. Explain and demonstrate and show Christ through the scriptures. This is the work of the preacher. Not just the preacher here behind the pulpit. Yes, this preacher behind this pulpit. But anytime we're speaking scripture, this is all of our responsibility. Make sure you understand, you grasp what the word is saying. That's what we're sharing.